This episode of Make Live is brought to you by DigiKey. Our first guest is Ranjit Batnagar, a sound and installation artist here in Brooklyn, New York. He's a member of local hackerspace NYC Resistor and also an avid project documenter and photographer. I'm going to roll over here to join you, Ranjit. Great to have you here. Thank you very much for having me on Make Live. Thank, thanks for coming. You've brought some, um, just even just visually, really striking things here, and I know they make sound too. Um, That's right. Let's let's start. Let's start simple before I jump ahead. Yeah. And, well, uh, the the, these guys. Yeah. Whistles. The very first thing I made, uh, my first instrument today, in 2008, was a whistle, and I've sort of followed in this tradition. I love making whistles because whistles are easy to make. They're fun. They're they're quick and they can look pretty cool. Yeah. This, for example, we've got a couple of ocarinas that I made. I've actually been lucky enough to have access to a laser cutter at the Hackerspace NYC Resistor here in Brooklyn. Mm -hmm. And so I've been using that a lot, especially this year. A whole lot of my Instrument Today projects have been made with, with laser cutter. So this is a working ocarina. It's made out of layers of, layers of wood laminated together. And okay, they're laminated together, I was going to ask. With wood glue, it's just wood glue, and uh -huh. the reason it's shiny is because I coated the whole thing with wood glue to fill in any leaks. Mm -hmm. It gives Actually, a nice aesthetic, uh, aesthetic look. Yeah, you've got that burned wood look. It kind of smells uh -huh. like barbecue because it was burned in a laser, and it really I plays. Didn't that sounds really good. Thank you. Yeah, this is one of my favorites. I, I think this one I actually made, a, made last year, but I've actually been playing around with it ever since. And God, here's one sense. I made this year that it's got a kind of a scion look to it, a blocky <laughs> look. But and you play by with, from the sides, right? Yeah, this one has the whole finger holes uh, on the sides. So innovative. It's not actually as practical, but it's it was a square easier. sound. Yeah. Yeah, it's got a square <laughs> sound, exactly, but not quite square waves. No, no. So I've been making these things on the laser cutter and the guys who did MakerBot, they've made a mm -hmm. site called Thingiverse.com, which is intended right, for people right. to share designs they've made for, for manufacturing. So mm -hmm. if you've made a design that, that works on the laser cutter or a 3D printer, you can upload your design to Thingiverse.com and share it with everyone. So everything you see here today that I made with laser cutter, including the, the Oak Ocarina and the, this round wrecked Ocarina, these are all available on Thingiverse for you to download and make nice. your own if you have access to a laser cutter. So people can, can grab those there and, you know, with access to a laser cutter, of course, at a tech shop or a hacker space or, or via a, you know, online service or something like that, they can make these, they can mod the design too and they can make variations and, and this kind of thing. That's right, yeah. That's awesome. And it's not only, not only those two, you also have a little fish. Yeah, this is one of my favorites just because it's cute. Ooh, I actually, ooh. I taught a, ooh a workshop at NYC Resistor a couple weeks ago on specifically how to learn how to use the laser to make whistles. And we had uh, six students and they made all kinds of crazy whistles, which was really a lot of fun. And somebody made a fish. You did. I made the fish. <laughs> <laughs> he's perky. Yeah, he's perky. Um, I, I, I'm, so, so these are awesome. This Thank is you. super cute. I'm staring at the mechanical synthesizer here. Let's, let's bring this over. Yeah. This is another laser project, of course. You can always tell a laser thing because <laughs> you've got the nice barbecue burnt edges on mm -hmm. it. It's a good aesthetic. I like it. Yeah. So this is not at all a practical musical instrument, but it's just a sort of fun exploration of how musical tones work. And also, this is kind of looking back at the way one of the very first musical synthesizers ever made back in the 19th century. Mm. I forget what it's called now, but there was this monster of a synthesizer which was made with a bunch of rotating metal wheels, metal gears. Uh, yeah, I think and, you're talking about it. Yeah. yeah, and the number of, number of teeth on each gear affects the pitch you get. So the more, the more teeth on the gear, okay. the more rapidly they fly past and right. the higher pitch you so, get. So they're spread out wider on these and it uh, goes up, you fit in more spokes, if you will, uh, on each one. Yeah, so for a more sophisticated high-tech approach like you might have had back in the 19th century, they actually mm. use magnetic pickups back in the 19th century, but here I'm going more primitive. Yeah. I'm just using a couple of, of scrapers. Right. Let's give it a cars. try and see yeah. what it sounds like. And I'm gonna warn you, it doesn't exactly sound beautiful. It's got some background noise, right? It's got some yeah. background yeah. noise. Yeah. There's the metric card.
And it sounds kind of different with plastic versus paper. Right. You can sort of bend it a little bit. Yeah. Well, like I said, not a practical musical instrument, but, yeah, but, but it was fun to make. A really eye-opening kind of, I mean, a learning device. I mean, I like making, I'm learning by making things, and this is a great example. Yeah, and you can actually imagine some really easy mods that would make this slightly more practical. Like, if you were to use optical sensors over these things instead, uh, yeah. instead, of, a, sure. instead of a piece of paper or plastic, then you could you could pick up the tones optically mm -hmm. and run through an amplifier and mm -hmm. maybe not have to listen to the horrible rattling noise of <laughs> right. the... You could isolate line. your tones a, little, a bit more. Yeah, exactly. Or you could, if you had metal wheels, you could do it magnetically like the, like the old guys did. Yeah, the possibilities are pretty endless there. Yeah. And, and, and as they've carried us to uh, you know, sound making today. Um, so the files are also available for this for the mechanical synthesizer. Those are also on Thingiverse. That's right. Well. In fact, if you if you just search so for cool. mechanical synthesizer, this will probably be probably the only one that comes up. I love it. Yeah. Well, who knows? There might be some variations after this. If yeah, I hope so. Yeah. Um, so okay. Not only this. This is not the the height of the awesome. We have more. And All right. It's so pretty pretty wild. This is the eight bit violin. Yeah. I have to say, I'm I'm pretty proud of this. This is. <laughs> It's not a good violin, it's not a high quality violin, but it is an actual working violin it's, that... It, it, I mean, it looks, it looks great. Thank you. I, I basically made it by looking up pictures of violins on Wikipedia and oh, really? around the web and tracing them in Adobe Illustrator, <laughs> but trying to go for a sort of 8-bit, pixely aesthetic while I was doing it. Mm -hmm. I'm not quite sure why I decided I wanted to do this in the first place. This is by far the most difficult instrument today project I did, and I have to admit that it took me more than one day. This was three or four days worth of work to put I this together. I can understand that. You know, I, I wouldn't fault you for that at all. <laughs> well, wow. thank you. So yeah, it's, but it's got all the parts that a real violin would have, just mm -hmm. made out of cheap laser cut plywood instead of plywood and sure, solid wood sure. instead of being beautifully hand carved. Yeah, and you've got this bridge that looks a bit like a Space Invader, kind uh -huh. of, if you look at it the right oh, and way. Another part I'm really proud of is the, the tuning pegs here on the end. The tuning pegs oh, sure. are literally square pegs and round holes. <laughs> That's perfect. I mean, incorrectly perfect. <laughs> incorrectly perfect, incorrect. yeah. yeah exactly. So unfortunately, I can't actually play the violin myself. Can you give it a plug? I can you plug know, it. It's in tune. You know, we're, we're, we'll actually hear a very uh, uh, nice performance later on. So uh, yeah. we've got someone who will play the violin for us. Yeah, hopefully. I can't wait. Nice. Well, the plucking sounds good by itself. Um, so. And yet, there's more. Beyond that, I, I see an ear of corn here. Yeah, I've this got the, the corn here. This comes from when I was at the farmer's market one fall, seeing the beautiful Indian corn with the randomly colored corn kernels on it. And I looked at it and I thought, not only is that beautiful, but it really looks like a piano player roll to me. It's got, it's got little dots on it, which I w my first thought was to take this home and translate it into music. So I actually Let's wrote. Oh. Uh, yeah, go ahead and bring it over. Is it alright? Yeah. I wrote a really simple program in processing, which you can download from my website, and maybe we can post a link to that later. Okay, I wrote so a simple processing program which uses the webcam on my computer to basically scan the corn as it rotates. Okay. Here, can you put it back in the? I have the the screen from your laptop. Oh, oh sure. Oh, great. I'm sorry. Yeah. I just want everything here so I can like touch it and we can turn it on and it, yeah. So yeah, as, as the corn rotates, which unfortunately I can't demonstrate for you right now because I forgot to bring an appropriate size battery to make it turn. <laughs> but as it rotates, the computer scans it and watches for especially dark kernels of corn. And when it sees one, it plays a note corresponding to how high, it up, high up it is. Mm -hmm. We have a little Perfect. video clip. We'll show oh yeah, let's video. watch a little video. Of Pretty awesome. Thank you. That was that is a great idea. Reminds me of I want to say drum sequencer, but um, evolved through nature. Yeah. Well, so the, sometimes it's kind of hard to come up with ideas when I'm trying to make a, I was gonna ask. a new instrument every single yeah. day. It's Some, a lot of pressure. Yeah. Sometimes I kind of bail and just bang on a garbage can or something, which is fun in itself. And which I, actually counts, though. I know it totally counts yeah, as far yeah. as I'm concerned, but 
sometimes I have an idea that just sticks in my head like the corn, and I'm pretty happy with that guy. You should be. That's great. Have you discovered any amazing uh, corn compositions? Has it tried different ears going through crops? I've actually no. got a couple of different ears here, in fact, though. Since I can, oh, so I'll bring have. out this one, which oh, sure. this one plays a different tune from the other sure, one. Sure, that would, sounds like it'd be pretty busy. Yeah, this one is a busier tune. But I can't say that any of them are actually beautiful. Maybe we have to do selective breeding to breed corn that <laughs> is better at composing music. We're just playing slower. That's, that's my philosophy. Yeah, that's right. Like then, that Justin Bieber thing where you slow him down by eight times. Sure. I, okay. I was thinking of like John Cage or something. but Oh, yeah, yeah that, too. that works, too. Well, yeah. this is all awesome. Thanks for bringing it out and showing to us. And uh, to play us out, we're going to have Elena Zuli is going to uh, treat us to a song on the 8-bit violin. No pressure. Take it away, Elena. <laughs>